the sad story of reaching the speed of light or reaching a black hole. Imagine you're about to launch in a hypermodern, extremely fast spaceship. Sound amazing, doesn't it? Well, physics isn't too gentle though. Let's see what happens if we reach the speed of light or anywhere near it. To explain what's happening, let's create a clock. Here, a cylinder with two mirrors, and let's put a photon in there and let it bounce around. And let's define each cycle as a second. Well, here we are flying in the fast spaceship. If you are inside the spaceship, well, time is just time as always. Nothing is going to happen. The clock will just tick as usual. But Einstein tells us the speed of light has the same value everywhere. So even if the car is traveling 20 meters per second and it turns on the front lights, the speed of the photon will not be the speed of light plus 20 meters per second. The speed of the photon will always be the speed of light. This has huge consequences, let's see why. If we sit here on this comet, the rocket will fly by like so. If we put a clock on the rocket, let's see the path of the photon. The photon shows up and down and horizontally as well. Of course, on the comet, the photon only goes up and down. The time is normal for you. You can clearly see that one path is longer than the other. Both particles travel with the same velocities, so the shortest path must take the shortest time. So a moving clock, compared to you, runs slowly. This is called time dilation, but the effects are only noticeable at very high speeds. As this graph show, it's time dilation as a function of speed and the relevant equation. You'll need to go at least 30% at the speed of light or something for a normal clock to detect the dilation, or you would need an atomic clock. By the way, remember on the spaceship time goes like normal. One second is always one second. It's just when you get out and meet someone on the comet, the comet man have gotten older compared to you. Now to the sad part. Let's send you on a rocket ride on a near speed of light spaceship. So let's go. What happens? Well, apart from using near-infinite energy to reach this speed, as this graph shows, the kinetic energy explodes at these speeds. Anyways, back to our journey. Turning fast means our light clock won't go up and down as much. Let's go even faster. This clip is in extreme slow motion. You saw that our light clock didn't move at all, meaning, of course, time didn't pass in the spaceship according to observers on the comet, but time did pass for our observers. So when returning to Earth after traveling with light speeds, everyone is now dead of old age because of time dilation. Thanks, Einstein. But wait, there's more. There is gravitational time dilation as explored in Interstellar. Spoiler, everyone dies of old age again. What is time dilation in a gravitational field then? I have a great idea. Let's send you into a black hole. Let's agree you send me a light signal every now and then. I will record how long time it takes. Let's go. We see moving closer to the black hole means the photon getting a stronger gravitational pull and the photon arrives later and later. Too close to the black hole and the light will never reach because the field is too strong. Now replace the light signal with the light clocks. The light clocks closest to the black hole travel slower and slower, meaning for us observing at a distance that the time pauses more and more. At the Schwarzschild radius, where light cannot escape the black hole, time is essentially stopped and if you manage to get out somehow, everyone would be dead of old age again. I want to thank my patrons for supporting this video. If you want to help me out as well, you can become a patron or subscribe.